Welcome. Welcome to our worship service this morning at First United Methodist Church, Marble Falls. We're so happy to have you with us and you're joining us at home either via our Facebook page and, uh, or uh, other media, and we're just glad that you're with us. We've just come together to worship our God, and we're just, in this unusual and trying times, we're thankful that we can still be together and to worship. Uh, just another short announcement to remember that our offices are closed, but however, uh, our pastors are available, and uh, you may call any one of the three of us, uh, myself, uh, Tommy Tucker, or Pastor Clay, or Pastor Ellen at any time, and we want to be there uh, for you. Just a little short announcement that hasn't appeared in our announcements earlier, uh, during this uh, uh, coming near future, we're going to offer a, a Zoom course on Financial Peace University. And if you're interested in this, keep checking our Facebook page for more information, or you can uh, contact uh, Christy or Brett for uh, more information at 830-456-7199. Uh, that telephone number will be available again for you. So now, let's begin our worship service. We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He And together we sing Everyone Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. We stand and lift up our hands. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. And together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. Fills the night 
It cannot hide the light Whom shall I fear? You crush the enemy Underneath my feet You are my sword and shield Though troubles linger still Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me I know who stands behind The God of angel armies Is always by my side The one who reigns forever He is a friend of mine The God of angel armies Is always by my side My strength is in your name, for you alone can save. You will deliver me, yours is the victory. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me, I know who stands behind the God of Angel armies is always by my side, the one who reigns forever. He is a friend of mine, the God of angel armies is always by my side. And nothing formed against me shall stand. You hold the whole world together. I'm holding on to your promises You are faithful, you are faithful And nothing formed against me shall stand You hold the whole world in your hand And I'm holding on to your promises You are faithful you are faithful, you are faithful. I know who goes before me, I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side I know who goes before me I know who stands behind The God of angel armies Is always by my side The one who reigns forever He is a friend of mine The God of angel armies Is always by my side The God of angel armies by my side Easy. Church, would you please join me in a moment of prayer? God, I thank you that you are our God. I thank you that we have the ability to communicate with you all of the feelings that we are having. God, don't let us be afraid to share with you what is in our hearts and our minds and even in our bodies as we are in this time of quarantine and the pandemic. God, during this time, I just want to continue to lift that your spirit be among those who are on the front lines of these battles those who are still working, those who are working in the medical industry, those who are trying to find a cure, those who struggle with decisions to be made about our public health and policies. God, allow us to find the balance of keeping safe and keeping things going. That balance, I think, is impossible without your spirit and your wisdom helping with those decision makers. God, there are those in our church who I know are requesting some prayer. God, I pray for 
Carol Freeman's brother-in-law, Roger Crowder. God, we pray for Brendan Hughes as he recovers from his fall. We pray for Marianne and Steve. Uh, We also give thanks that our congregation, even in this time of pandemic, has celebrated new birth. God, we thank you for uh, the new Pauline, Edley Pauline, and the birth of that grandchild. We thank you for the great nephew that Wade and Ellen also get to celebrate. But I know that there are many other concerns that are heavy on our hearts. Don't let this be a time where we pray alone. Let this be a time where we continue to pray as a church. Reach out to someone. Join one of our prayer groups. Or pray right now as I'm speaking of things that are heavy on your hearts so we can all pray together. But let us end our time of prayer by modeling that prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I would love to invite a special moment to talk to our children with Stephanie. Hey, church, good morning. Hey, friends, good morning. I sure do miss each and every one of you. I'm so grateful to be here this morning. Um, This morning, Pastor Ellen's going to be sharing with us about when the Israelites were freed and um, just sort of that journey. There was like a short route that could have led them out of the city, but but God chose to take them on the longer route, which was actually the tougher way. We, too, are facing tougher times. We're facing new challenges and trials. Um, But how do you see God in this new way digitally? I know for me, like, every time that I get on Zoom and I get to have conversations with you guys, it makes, I see God in each of you. It has been such an amazing time for me. um, I've I've gotten to really know each of you very personally, and it's been so much fun. Um, I've seen commercials where they're really, like, starting to show just the power of family and the power of time and the power of connection. And I just think that that is huge, too. There's so many people doing amazing things in the community. They're using creative ways to do things in a new way and even kind of exciting ways. And the truth is that God is still guiding us. It just may look a little bit different. Even though the church building is not working, I just want to share a moment to let you know the work of the church has not stopped. Um, As we're getting ready to uh, continue to do the work of the church, I wanted to share with you guys a a montage of a certain group of our church with many volunteers and leaderships called the Highland Lakes Crisis Network. This organization started as an ecumenical, which is a big fancy word for a bunch of different churches getting together uh, during the flood. And since then, it has been able to shift and evolve into all sorts of ways of helping our community. And we are helping our community in the time of quarantine. And we have so much support both from our local church and members of our church. Uh, Let us pray for the offering to do the work of God. Dear Jesus, thank you for the chance to give even in these times. God, even though the way in which church seems to have changed, the mission of the church has never changed. We are here to share the good news of Jesus Christ and to help all of those in need. Thank you that our work can still be done. Help us do that work. In Jesus' name, amen.
today I'm at the Highland Lakes Crisis Network office, and I'm here with Ron and Pat, uh, who both attend Methodist United Church here in Marble Falls, and um, I'm going to ask them some questions about just what you all do from this office and who you serve in the community. All right. Well, right now we take care of Burnett County and Lano County, and we our uh, meals are being delivered from the Highland Lakes Crisis Network for just about 500 meals go out every day. Wow. And we have volunteers from all different churches that are helping prepare meals and make deliveries and other individuals. And, and we kind of coordinate drivers, uh, people who need meals, how many they need of their needs of needs of money they have that we might be able to fulfill. And Basically, I just do whatever Pat tells me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are some of those other needs other than meals that uh, people are, are well, that you're people are call looking for things like toiletries, uh, diapers. Uh, uh, just um, grocery shopping. Grocery shopping. Uh, people that need some people run errands for them, pick up prescriptions. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and we, we have people that, we have shepherds that actually shop for some of our a lot of our older folks or that are, their immune systems are compromised and they can't get out. We have shepherds that check on them weekly and do their weekly grocery shopping for them and deliver them and take care, and take care of them and just check on them and make sure they're doing okay. That's awesome. Um, um, tell me now, where do the funds come from for, for all the work that y'all do? Their donations from the community, uh, churches, individuals, um, from our own church, we've gotten a donation from our own helping fund. Um, and we've had uh, individual donations from people who have sent money to the church, to our church, to say uh, we want that to go to the Highland Lakes Crisis Network. Uh, we also, our missions committee has also donated for here. Um, so all over the community, different churches, the churches have really stepped up to be the hands and feet of God during this time. Praise God. Well, we just want you to know that we're very thankful for both of you and this whole organization and all those volunteers that are working for you. And then when we're, when we're thankful, we say thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Go on up to the mountain of mercy To the crimson perpetual tide Kneel down on the shore and be thirsty no more Go under and be purified Follow Christ to the holy mountain Sinner sorry and wrecked by the fall Cleanse your heart and soul in the fountain that flows For you and for me and for all At the wonderful, tragic, mysterious tree On that beautiful, scandalous night You and me were atoned by His blood And forever washed white On that beautiful, scandalous night on the hillside you will be delivered At the foot of the cross justified And your spirit restored By the river that pours From our blessed Savior's side At the wonderful, tragic, mysterious tree On that beautiful, scandalous night you and me were torn by his blood and forever washed white on that beautiful scandalous night at that wonderful tragic mysterious tree on that wonderful scandalous night you and me were torn by his blood and forever washed white on that beautiful scandalous night on that
scripture for today is from the uh, Old Testament book of Exodus, and we're reading from chapter 13, verse 17, all the way through uh, chapter 14, uh, verse 31. This is an old familiar story, and it's entitled, uh, to begin with, The Pillars of Cloud and Fire. Hear these words of scripture. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, although that was nearer. For God thought, if the people face war, they may change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people by the roundabout way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of the land of Egypt prepared for battle. And Moses took with him the bones of Joseph, who had required a solemn oath of the Israelites, saying, God will surely take notice of you, and then you must carry my bones with you from here. So they set out from Succoth and camped at Etham on the edge of the wilderness. The Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them along the way, and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light so that they might travel by day and by night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and camp in front of Piharoth between Migdol and the sea. In front of Baal Zephon, you shall camp opposite it by the sea. Pharaoh will say of the Israelites, They are wandering aimlessly in the land. The wilderness has closed in on them. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them, so that I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And they did so. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the minds of Pharaoh and his officials were changed toward the people. And they said, What have we done letting Israel leave our service? So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 picked chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the Israelites who were going out boldly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, his chariot drivers and his army. They overtook them camped by the sea at Piharoth in front of Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them, and so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of the Lord, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, 
and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So good morning, church. It's good to be with a few of you. Ben, thank you so much for what you're doing. I know this six-foot distancing thing is tough. And Tommy, thank you for reading that long scripture. I think I told him I think I owe him lunch uh, after reading that long scripture. And I have something else I want to say before I pray, and that is I cannot tell you how much I miss you, church family. It is so strange to, pr to preach to empty pews and at least this morning we've got the band and the pastors and a few others and so it is so good to have a few here but we certainly miss each of you church family and know that and know that we love you and uh, we are eager to see you again in this room let us go to God in prayer gracious and mighty God we thank you so much that you come to us in all sorts of ways in all sorts of places and we thank you, O oh God, that even though we are separated by space today, we are united by your spirit. We are united in our homes or wherever we happen to be watching this service. Be with us, O oh God, as we meditate on your word and may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight because you, O oh God, are our strength and our deliverer. Amen. So I need to explain why we're doing what we're doing with 30-second theology. Uh, some months back, I pitched the idea to Tommy and Clay that maybe we should do a sermon series on TV commercials. And though that might seem kind of strange, for years I've looked at commercials and said to Wade, that'll preach. Um, you know, I see things, and maybe it's my marketing background and then the preacher's hat that I wear, and I combine those two things and they become very dangerous I think Wade would be absolutely thrilled if I could find a way to preach about the Geico squirrels, but I can't figure that out. That's our favorite one. But since I can't figure that out, I'm going to start with another commercial that is from Fidelity Investments about eight or nine years ago. With just a few adjustments, the plan we worked on for your retirement makes sense. Just stay on track. What is... That's the guidance you get from Fidelity. Thanks. Whatever your destination, Fidelity has the people, guidance, and investments to help you find your way. Fidelity Investments. Turn here. If only life were that easy, right? If only we had that line on the road right in front of us every step that we take. But maybe it is that easy. It almost seemed that easy in our lesson this morning from Exodus chapter 13 and 14. And yes, it's a long lesson. But it's critical to our understanding of how God led the Israelites and how he seeks to lead us as well. 
365, day and night. Friends, I doubt that the Fidelity Green Line lights up at night. I think when the sun goes down, you're on your own. Not so with God. This story gives us an example of what we know to be theophany. That's a big word that just means God was appearing in a physical form through the cloud and the pillar of fire. Can you imagine leading 600,000 Hebrew men and their families for 40 years on a difficult journey? Through a desert. Wade went camping last weekend. I stayed home. I couldn't imagine 48 hours in a pop-up camper. So, obviously, I can't imagine traveling through hostile territory for 40 years. But that's exactly what happened. And God led them every step of the way. They were told when and where to move and exactly what to do. As verse 21 tells us, The Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them along the way and a pillar of fire by night to give them light so that they may travel day and night. Friends, that's called God's providence. God is the sustaining and guiding power, and that's what providence means. I don't know about you, but I can look back over my life of many years and see the countless times that even though I was oblivious, God guided my steps, even in difficult times, maybe especially in difficult times. There wasn't a green line on the sidewalk to lead me. But somehow, dense as I can be, God led me, took me by the hand, and provided his providential guidance every step of the way. Do you think sometimes God just shakes his head in wonder that we are so oblivious? And then again, I look back and I see how God protects us from many things that we never see. Things that we don't even know are happening. Like that accident we were almost in. Or that illness we almost contracted. That relationship that had we encountered it would have been detrimental to our lives. God saw the dangers that we faced and he protected us. God saw the dangers the Hebrews would face. And one example of that is the most direct route to the promised land went right through the land of the Philistines. But had they done that, it would have been much more dangerous. Now, that doesn't mean that God can remove all the heartache in the world, all the things that we encounter. But I believe God sprinkles grace along the way to watch over us, to protect us, and to comfort us. Remember also the Hebrew people had the stories of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in their heart through the oral traditions that we now know to be Scripture. They knew that hundreds of years before, this sacred ground upon which they were traveling had been promised to Abraham and his descendants. They knew that God would watch over them because of the oral lessons they had learned and not just heard, but had committed to their hearts. Brothers and sisters, leadership is critical today. If you Google the word leadership, you get millions of references. But it was critical then as well. And it has to be more than a green line on a sidewalk to keep us from doing something that we shouldn't do. And that's why we need God's clear guidance. They needed God's clear guidance. But they also needed a servant of God to help lead them. While Moses and Aaron were there, they protected them. They led them. Without Moses and Aaron, where would they be? Friends, I want you to think this morning about the people in your lives. Each of us have had our Moses or our Aaron who led us as agents for God. Think for a few moments. Who were those people? Who guided you on God's behalf? Who were the people in your lives who took the time to teach you, to listen to you, to shed a tear with you, or to laugh with you. Maybe it was a teacher or a scout leader. Maybe it was a pastor or a Sunday school teacher. It could have been a neighbor or a coach. Friends, who was your Moses? Who was your Aaron? 
And what difference did they make in your life through their guidance? Many of those people prayed you through some very difficult circumstances, right? I know I had that in my life. They guided you with their love and with their prayers. And remember also in verse 10, the Hebrew people cried out to God in fear as they saw the Egyptians in pursuit of them. In verse 10 we read, As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. We're really not different, are we? We wait until we're in a world of hurt over something in our lives. Something is anxiously in pursuit of us. And then we decide to turn to God. We anxiously wait on that phone call from the doctor for the safe arrival of someone that we love. And then, almost as an afterthought, we decide, maybe I should pray. As the people cried out to God in prayer, how did God respond? He gave very specific directions saying, Then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. In other words, get moving. How many of us pray, listen for God's guidance, and then freeze up because we're not sure what to do or we're fearful of what to do? Brothers and sisters, we have to trust that God goes before us, the pillar of cloud. He is behind us. He goes with us in all things. We cannot allow ourselves to be frozen in fear. Because you see, fear is the opposite of trust. There may not be a visible green line on our sidewalk. But I promise, God's Spirit is just as present before you. Just like that invisible cloud by day and that pillar of fire by night. And remember that God sprinkles grace along the way. He leads us in all things, in all times, and in all places. Never doubt it. You can take that to the bank. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, let us pray together. Mighty and loving God, we thank you so much for the love that you give us. For the blessings, the following all over us. We ask, O God, that you be with us. That you help us this morning to pause and reflect on the many ways that you have guided us. And in those memories, we know we can look ahead and trust you. Trust that you are with us. Maybe not as a green line, but certainly as a very present force and comfort thank you O oh God for that gift thank you for never giving up on us in the name of Jesus Christ we pray amen as we reflect on this sermon this morning as we reflect on our lives and where we are today let's take a few moments we can't invite people to join our church this morning well we can but what we can do is offer a time to ask you to reflect on your lives and to reflect on where God has led you and where God leads you in the future, what your next steps might be. During that time, our band is going to play for us. They're going to close our service out. And as they do that, may we think about and may we thank God for all that he has done and for all that he will continue to do. Amen.
this morning as we conclude our service let me invite you as this week progresses to think about those things those persons those opportunities that God has given us and that God continues to give us help us to remember that God guides us he's in front of us he's behind us and he sprinkles grace along the way thanks be to God amen